welcome to Birdland by Brendan Patrick Hennessy and I'm gonna I'm Axel and I'm gonna play this really cool game. So I think it's about let's just check this out. It doesn't give a synopsis of the book but it tells who wrote it and it gives a little cast. So cool that there's drawings for these. This girl looks really sad. <laughs> And um, yeah, I won't check these yet because I'm just going to start and do my playthrough. Dear Bridget, we're so sorry to hear you're not having a better time at camp. You know it's no fun going without your phone for an entire month, but do try to make the best of it. Trust us. It may all seem miserable now, but when you're an adult, you're going to look back on this as one of the best summers of your life. You only get to be 14 once, after all. And don't forget that you're in the most beautiful place on the earth. The mail up there is so slow, so that we don't know when this letter will reach you. So let's just say, enjoy your last however many days at camp. Love you, kiddo, mom and dad. Oh, that's sweet. You sigh and put the letter in your bag. 20. Mackenzie Singh, your bunkmate, peeks over the side of her bed. 21? Days left, nothing. Hmm. Nothing, just saying numbers to myself. Mmm, that makes sense. Oh, I think that was more sarcastic. Mmm, that makes sense. Night, Mackenzie. Night, Bridget. You switch off your flashlight and feel a dull thud in your chest as you close your eyes. What? That is not normal. That night. You dream you're the sheriff of a wild west town populated entirely by bird people. Your bird deputy scrutinizes you closely as you mosey along beneath the bright pink sky. Well, I like the background is pink too, so it makes sense. Deputy monotonously, state your job title. Sheriff. And what is the function of, the sh of a sheriff? To keep the law, to maintain order, to help people. Hmm. Those are all good answers, but what is the most? To help people. There's folks in town, in that town yonder, need our protection, and we're gonna be the ones what protect them. The purpose of the sheriff is to ensure the safety of the community, I reckon. Very well, demonstrate the behavior of a human sheriff. You spit out whatever you were chewing and lands in a spittoon in the middle of the road that you weren't previously aware of. <laughs> An old dream logic. An old bird perched outside the dry goods store not approvingly when he hears the ping. <sighs> Suddenly right up in your face. Human, are you the sheriff in this ro location? That's right. Well, for your information, I am not accustomed to being the subject to the authority of a human sheriff. <gasps> <laughs> your deputy steps forward with his hand on his gun. Steady yourself, inebriate. Intoxicated vagrancy in the presence of law enforcement is an unacceptable infraction. Lay down the law, leave him be. Nah, leave him be. Drunk such as that ain't worth our time. Let's go. You walk past him. Hey, I'm talking to you. Well, I ain't talking to you. Sheriff, you would allow this drunkard to continue causing a disturbance in the street? Dusting off your fair sheriff badge. Uh, I reckon he'll tire himself out eventually. The two of you look back. The drunk has already passed out, face down in the middle of the street. Besides, we've got places to be. Such as? Go to the saloon, foil a robbery. Hmm. I like to chill at the saloon. Such as the old watering hole. Come on. Deputy looking around. I see no water-filled holes in the vicinity. You... Okay, this... <laughs> You and the deputy walk into a quiet, dark saloon. A solid solitary bird is hunched over in the corner, mumbling into his drink. Barkeep, wiping down a glass with a rag. Good morning, Sheriff. Barkeep, what beverage can I provide you? Uh, Starts up Parilla and make a double. Coming up immediately. Sheriff, what are we doing in this establishment? Relaxing, waiting for trouble. Well, that's the same thing, these two, <laughs> basically. <clears throat> our, jobs is, our job's to sniff out trouble in this town, and if I 
If I there's one thing that I know, if I there's one thing I know about this town, it's that trouble has a way of finding itself in this here saloon. That is very true. The saloon doors burst open. A bird in a black hat saunters into the bar. Speak of the devil. Do you know this entrant? That's Burton Mc Burton McBirdford, head honcho of the McBirdford clan. Meanest cattle rustler or this side of the Mississippi. No small area. No small rustler either. He sits down at the bar. McBirdford. Bartender, bring me a whiskey beverage. All of this rustling is making me thirsty. Sheriff, it would seem this individual has openly admitted to a criminal behavior. What will you do? I don't know. Arrest him, ignore him, have a shootout. Yeah! No, just kidding. Arrest him. <laughs> okay. Suppose we'd better deal with this proper like. You walk up to the bar and put your hand on McBurford's shoulder. All right, McBurford, your rustling days are over. Why don't you just come quietly? Oh, I will come quietly, all right, after shooting you. Okay, take him in, have a shootout. No, I won't take him in, you know? Don't make us ask again, McBurford. Or what? You'll shoot me here, right here in this saloon? Maybe I will. If it comes to that, McBird Forge slowly gets up from the bar. You know what, Sheriff? You squint at him. That is exactly the kind of attitude I respect from a law enforcement officer. He sticks out his wrist. <laughs> Please take me to jail immediately. What the heck? <laughs> you cuff him. I must say I'm genuinely, genuinely impressed this tactic su succeeded. Just one of the many tricks you us cowpokes have up our sleeves. Most intriguing. Thank you for your demonstration, Sheriff. Have a pleasant morning. <laughs> this, this year, never happens in real life. You wake up a feeling bit different than you did yesterday. So your serenity is now normal. Your alacrity is now heightened. Damn it, I wish I spoke English better. Your vigilance is now normal, your melancholy is now heightened, your tenacity is now lowered, your guile is now heightened. I'm going to look all these words up, except like these two, um, to know exactly what they mean. So the quality of your dreams will affect your waking mood. Okay, so I guess I should, like, okay, I know it's like a game, right? So you're trying to win it, but I'm just going to go with like how I would do it, right? Because it's probably going to be more interesting that way anyway. And instead of trying to get that perfect ending. Just get an ending that's nice. Oh, I like this drawing. July 13th morning. Canoe dock. Ben, the canoeing instructor, is giving a lecture from the dock. An assortment of campers sit in front of him, straddling lods and holding their paddles off to the side as if they were actually sitting in canoes. The boats themselves sit pristinely up on the rocks, looking like they've never been in the water. Dan Canoe, his name <laughs> is Canoe. Oh my God. Oh, okay, wait, it's a nickname. Okay, that'd be really funny if his last name was Canoe and he was the paddling instructor. <laughs> okay, Dan Canoe, it's all about respect. You have to respect the pa paddle. Be one with the paddle. Treat the paddle like a lover or if you prefer a close friend. Most of all, you've got to stay calm and centered. The paddle can sense anxiety and if you bring a nervous energy into the canoe, the paddle will betray you. The campers stare at him blankly. Now, he picks up a paddle. Today we're going to be practicing some basic strokes. Remember to grip the handle firmly and make calm, deliberate motions. Any questions? You raise your hand. Bridget. Okay, my name's British. When do we actually start canoeing? I'm a little worried about tipping over. When you say the paddle can sense things. <laughs> um, when you said the paddle could read your thoughts, uh, sense anxiety. Yeah. Dan walks over to the log you're sitting on and puts his hand on your shoulder. It's a metaphor. I'm just saying that a paddle doesn't work very well if you're uncertain about how you're using it. If you want to master the canoe, you need calm and confidence. 
I don't get it. And what if I don't want to master the canoe? So it can't read your thoughts then. Well, <laughs> these are, I'm, I'm being a little asshole to this person. <laughs> okay. And what if we just want to paddle the canoe, not master it? <sighs> it breaks my heart to hear you ask that question. Oh, sorry? <laughs> it's not me you have to apologize to. He points to your paddle. You look down at it and furrow your brow. Okay, everyone, get going. I'll come by and do one-on-ones. The campers all start fake paddling. Bridget, why don't you show me your technique? Technique, got it. You grab your paddle and hold it off the side of the log as if you're sitting in an actual canoe. Okay, let's look at this. This change. Paddle as quickly as possible. Okay, my tenacity is down, so I couldn't. Do something fancy, do something half-hearted, don't do anything. Oh, what would happen to that? I don't know. Okay, your mood affects which accent, actions and dialogue choices are available up to you. Some options will be disabled if the corresponding emotion is not heightened enough. That is so interesting. Oh my gosh, that is so cool because, like, I love, like, at first when I saw this thing, I was like, well, it's, why didn't they just publish this as a book? But now I see, like, they have a bunch of coding and stuff for it because tenacity is down so it'll remember that and you can't use it after so okay so I can't do the best answer this is probably the best answer right or one of them okay so do something half-hearted fancy or quickly as possible or don't do anything that's you know that's I don't I wouldn't do that um, do something fancy do something half-hearted I would do this. So I'm guessing guile has to do with um, being really dramatic. Okay, do something fun. You move your paddle around in a bunch of squiggly lines as if you're doing a very complicated stroke. Aha, uh -huh. and what do you call that? Oh my god. No name, it's an original. <laughs> um, yeah, I know nothing about paddling I just know that you can paddle backwards and it'll make you turn and that's the most trickiest thing I know okay let's do that then no name um it's uh, an original that's one way of putting it certainly why don't we keep things a little more basic for now show me your J stroke J stroke got it draw a straight line with your panel draw J with your damn it <laughs> I can't do this. Okay, I knew this would be a good answer. That's what I would have done if I was real. Like, if I was actually... Well, I mean, I guess I'm not... Yeah, okay. So, draw a straight line. Improvise. I guess I... Oh, I think... I guess I'll improvise. Okay. You hesitate for a second and then just start wiggling your paddle around. After you, after a big, a few big twirly moves, you look up at Dan. Mmm. Your technique's a little off here. I guess it was kind of more like my interpretation of a G-stroke. Um, hmm. And how exactly does your interpretation of a J-stroke keep the boat straight? Wait, is that what a J-stroke is for? <sighs> you senior girls, you think you have it all figured out. We do? But it's a dangerous world out there. He gestures to the almost perfectly still lake, listening softly in the late morning light. One mistake out on open water and you could drown, or worse. I bet you ten bucks this is foreshadowing. Okay. What's worse than drowning? I pray you never have to find out. Foreshadowing! <laughs> July 13th, midday. Swimming dog. Yes, he looks so cool, guys. Look at him. He has, like, a smile on his face. Like, yeah, and the shades. Why, why does my mouse go really huge sometimes? <laughs> Whatever. TJ, the swimming instructor, watches from the lifeguard seat as everyone practices their front crawls. He blows his whistle and all the campers come to a stop. TJ, swim. Okay, that's enough. I'm bored. Free swim. <laughs> One of the senior boys pulls up his goggles. You serious? As a heart attack, my... Wait. As a heart attack, my dude. Jump off the thing, swim around, do whatever. He stretches his back. Just whatever you do, make you do make sure you do it with enthusiasm. Okay, so what will I do? Try to hold my breath. 
considering going up on the diving board, just swing or swim around like whatever. I want to go on the diving board. You go over to the diving tower at the edge of the dock. You put your hand on the ladder and look up. It's big. Even the low board looks pretty high up. You back away from the ladder and bump into Mackenzie. Whoop! Sorry, you going up? You look up again. Uh, oh, uh, no. You go ahead. You sure? Yeah, I don't really feel like jumping right now. What? <laughs> okay. <laughs> As if to demonstrate this fact, you sit down at the edge of the dock and slowly slip back into the water. Okay, then. My choices do not make any difference. Okay, see you. You wave. Key. Bruh. I wanted to jump on the <laughs> diving board. Bye, swim around for a while. Okay. You sit around for a while and then climb back out of the water. Taylor Massey and Taylor Creek, two, two other girls from your cabin, are sitting there dangling their legs in the water. Okay, they're not twins? What? Okay, Taylor C. Hey, Bridget! You. Hey, guys! Oh, hey! We were just arguing about who's done the most sex stuff. Oh, that's cool. Uh-huh. Taylor C said she's done the most because she's made out with four different boys already and I've only made out with one. But my thing was like, I'm pretty sure those guys count as less than my boyfriend because I gave him a handy J while his parents were out of town and she was like, well, that doesn't really count because the lights were off and you couldn't see it. But what I'm saying is he lives right downtown so there was a lot of ambient light coming through the window anyway. He lives right downtown. Anyway, how much sex stuff has you done? Yeah, tell us all your sex stories right now. <laughs> this is totally like, um, this reminds me of a, a Judy Bloom book. Uh, okay, look at the time. Who's counting? Oh, I can do that because my alacrity is up. Okay, wait. So they're asking me all my sex. So who's counting? So that's saying I would do that a lot. Hmm. Yeah, I want to keep talking to these girls. I don't want to leave them. So let's do that. I mean, you know, who's counting? I am. Yeah, we both are. Look, all these numbers, one, four, zero, they're all just arbitrary anyway. You know what I mean? It's like, at the end of the day, some are higher and some are lower, but who could say really? Yep. Wow, that's wisdom, Bridge. Yeah, very true. Great. So uh, I'm gonna go jump in this lake now and end this conversation forever. We good? They nod. They, you jump in the lake and swim away as fast as you can. <laughs> okay. She's cool. Yeah, very self-assured. Hey, how much sex stuff do you think she's done? Probably a totally normal, respectable amount. Yeah, I was gonna prob I was gonna say probably exactly the amount that I would find the most cool. <laughs> These people are so funny. Okay. <laughs> July thirteenth. Unlucky number. Afternoon. Sailing dock. Bell Park, Alicia Sale, Abby. Cool. This girl seems kind of sad. She looks kind of angry, but it's all good. Okay. Alicia, the ceiling instructor, is standing on top of a supply box and delivering a fiery motivational speech, periodically banging her fist into her palm for emphasis. You've got to give it everything you've got out there. Every bit of persistence, every bit of doggedness, and determination. You can never ever give up and you can never ever cop out because in a real sailboat there's no room for excuses. There, there's no it's too hard or it's too windy or it's not windy enough. Out there on the water there's only you, your wets and sailboat and God. <laughs> and also one other person. Everyone buddy up, you're going out tandem. All the campers on the dock pair off. You're left standing alone next to Bell Park, a fellow camper from your section. She shrugs. I'm gonna get in a boat. The two of you jump in a boat and head out on the lake. Bell basically sails the boat by herself while you sit there with your hand in your lap. Hands in your lap. So, uh, what's up? We've never really talked, huh? Don't think so. Cool. You scratch the back of your head. I'm Bridget. I know. Oh, I just figured, you know, the first time you talk to someone. Ah, gotcha. I'm Belle. <laughs> nice to meet you. You idly drum your fingers on the side of the boat. 
So did you just say hi? Wait, did you just want to say hi or was there something in particular you wanted to talk about? Just want to say hi, how's it going? Tell me about yourself, I like your hair. Uh, wait, she had the, uh, yeah, she had, uh, she had nice hair. I wouldn't say that to her though. Yeah, you tell me about yourself. Okay, you know what, this would, you know what, if I was actually, okay, if I was actually wanting to be friends with someone, I would compliment them first. So yeah, I'm gonna do this, even if I don't especially like her hair, right? Um, I like your hair. Oh, she puts her hand through it. Thanks. Yeah, it used to be way longer, but I'm trying something new. Kind of like more professional, but also spunkier. Why would you need to be more professional? Well, my clients have certain expectations. You know how it is. Clients? Oh, right, of course. I forgot there's no reason you'd know it about any of that. Sorry, I'm a detective. Yes! <laughs> You're a detective? Mm-hmm. How are you a detective? Aren't you my age? Well, I'm not like a police detective. I'm a teen detective. Bellwoods W. Park, teen detective. That's what it says on my card. That sounds super familiar. I'd give you a card, but I didn't think to bring any out into the middle of the lake. <laughs> yeah. Wait, are you that girl who solved the library murder, the thing with the evil computer? Okay, see Bellpart's use detective for all the thrilling details. Okay. It, I'd say it was more rampant than evil. Also, it was a local area network, not a computer. And it wasn't really a murder either, at least not technically speaking. The one guy got in some trouble, but they ruled it out with in an accidental death. Still though. Yep, that was me. Whoa, I saw you on the news. <laughs> Okay, what's being a detective like? What happened at the library? So you're like an experiment. I don't know what that is. Okay, what's being a detective like? So what's being a detective like? Oh, it's not as exciting as it seems. I spend a lot of time in the library mostly. The murder library? <laughs> I mean, sure, one time there was a murder. Most of the time though, it's just reading books, looking through periodicals, googling stuff, talking to helpful librarians. And also spying on people like those people happen to be in the library. Oh. Which is not to say I just do my spying in the library. I also go to deserted parking lots and ravines and weird basements. That sounds very intense. It is. And also a lot of fun. I get to put on cool disguises to do all these sweet investigative techniques. Like, you know, hiding in the trunk of a car or digging through trash or pretending pretending to be delivering Chinese food. That kind of stuff. Okay. <laughs> Back to this, okay. Pretending you, that kind of stuff. Okay. Hiding in the trunk of a car, digging through trash, pretending to deliver Chinese food. I think this one is the most preposterous. Okay. You hide in trunks? Yeah, all the time. They're actually surprisingly roomy, especially for someone my size. How do you like not die? Eh, that's not too hard. Cars are typically designed to not kill you. Yeah, but they're like also designed for you to wear a seatbelt. Minor detail. <laughs> so, this is like a job for you. What kind of cases have you solved? Hmm, let's do this one because I want to know. So, what kind of cases have you taken on since the whole thing? Oh, there's been a ser whole series of them, really. The case of the stolen test cores, the case of the haunted gymnasium, the case of the city wide bike theft ring. The case of the armed convenience store robbery. After a while, it starts to feel a little formulaic. Holy crow, that's a weird word. This is like Nancy Drew. You, um, oops, I didn't mean to say that. Okay, I can't imagine doing all that. You should read more. No, I mean, I can't imagine someone doing it. Just not me. Not the adventurous type. I wouldn't even know where to begin. Well, why don't we start with an easy one? You can help me sail. <laughs> she holds on my like, Okay. Okay, how do I... Here. She ha takes your hand and places it on the line. Ah! Okay. It's simple. You hold on and try to keep it steady. If the line starts feeling really slack, you'll pull it in a bit. If it's super taut, you feel like it's going to whip out of your hands, you let it out a bit. That doesn't sound simple. Trust me, it all makes total sense when you're in the middle of it. Ready? I guess. 
and let's go! She pulls on a couple of things over on her side. The boat starts turning and picking up a bit of speed. You feel the rope in your hand start to tighten. Pull it in. Oh wait, the boat's not even picking up speed. Um, okay, so... Yeah, let it out a little, right? You let the line out a little bit. It goes to a comfortable slackness. There you go, see? Nice and loose. Easy. A gust of wind picks up and fills the sail. The rope starts whipping out of your hand super fast. Okay, let it slip. Yeah. You panic and let go of the road. Oh god! Bell reaches over and snatches it before anything happens. Okay, that was a little too loose. Ugh. <laughs> it's okay, you were doing really fine until you let go. Really? Yeah, the thing about sailing is that it's like 90% holding on to things. I mean, there's lots of ways and reasons to hold things, but holding is the main verb. <laughs> so if all else fails and you don't know what to do, just grab onto something and hold on for dear life. Uh-huh. Maybe you should take over for the rest of the afternoon. That night. Da-da-da. Okay. You dream you are on a pirate ship on a ship crewed entirely by bird people. Your bird first mate scrutinizes you closely as you stand on the deck beneath the bright pink sky. First mate, state your job title. Pirate captain. And what is the function of a pirate captain? <laughs> to go on adventures, to find some booty. Yeah. Okay, just kidding. To feel the salt spray on your face. Hmm. He would not like that. But I mean... The salt? Oh yeah, because you're in the ocean. Okay, to go on adventures. Yeah. We be adventurous types out for thrills and glory, just like true detectives. You mean true pirate captains? What did I say? <laughs> it is of no importance. So the purpose of the pirate captain is to make dangerous journeys? Yar! <laughs> Very well. Demonstrate the behavior of a human pirate captain. Strike out for buried treasure, find a ship to rob. Yeah! Okay, haul up the main brace and flatten the jib, boys. We're off to find a ship laden with booty. <laughs> Affirmative, pirate captain. You intend to take objects of monetary value from another sealing vessel? Is that a permiss permissible interaction under the current legal system? Who cares? Okay, no, we're outlaws. Yes, uh, there's no pirate's code. <laughs> yeah, we're outlaws, matey. Out on the open sea with no laws but the ones we make. Avast! I find this concept deeply perplexing. Yeah, well... You're deeply perplexing. Okay. A ship appears off the starboard bow. There's our prey now. Close in, boys. Ready the cannons. Okay, fire a warning shot. Unleash a full barrage. I'm not sure what that means. I think that means, it's like, pff, fire on them. Okay, let's play it nice. You fire a warning shot across their bow. bow. The other ship immediately comes to a full stop and raises a white flag which says, We surrender on it. We've done it, boys! Ya ha ha! Okay. The, bird crew, the bird crew lets out a monotonous, oh, a monotonous cheer. So it's like, yay, I guess. The sailors on, on the other ship start tossing treasure chests onto your deck. Hell yeah. We seem to have acquired this currency with great ease. I we be filthy the rich. What then is the next course of action? Back to port. We head to for port. You would return to a populated area after committing this offense? Are you not concerned about the presence of law enforcement officials? Okay, these dreams are all about like law and stuff. Like what is this? Okay. Not landlubber port, ya landlubber. We're going to a pirate village where the only law is the pirate code. We broke it. Oops. <laughs> oh my god. And there's no landlubbers allowed. Yar. Okay. The sun sets and a thick fog rolls in as your ship slowly pulls into port. There are a bunch of ramshackle shacks on stilts, etc. What is our first order of business in this vicinity? We're laden down with booty. <laughs> But it's now it's time is to spend it. You step off the gangplank into a tavern. A bunch of pirate birds are clinking big mugs together and throwing knives into the wall. Nice, that's like darts. 
<laughs> Monkeys run around grabbing things off tables. Sick. A most unpleasant establishment. What is our purpose here? Drink some grog, sing pirate song, live the pirate life. Drink! Yeah. We're here to drink some grog, just like pirates do, ya ho ho, and a bottle of rum. I am unfamiliar with the substance grog. What are its properties? Uh, I don't know. I think it's green. An old woman calls out to you from a small table in the corner. Pirate captain, do you wish to have your future foretold by myself? This seems like an inadvisable distraction of frivolity. Get your fortune told or pass. Hmm. Let's do this. Aye, I would. You sit down at her table. Very well. She draws three cards and lays them face down in front of her. Let us see what my divinatory objects predict. She flips over the first card. It shows a bird surrounded by a wreath and has the number X, uh, 21 at the top. I'm not sure. Okay. <laughs> the planetary body. You will find yourself at odds with an incompatible word world view. Hmm. That's actually probably gonna play into the story, and that doesn't sound good. Great. Uh, okay. She flips over the second card. This one shows a bird pouring out water underneath an eight-pointed star. It has a number, um, dang it, I don't know, on it. <laughs> the distant plasma free sphere. Unexpected visitor will upset the natural order of your current social environment. Huh. Okay, I'll remember that, right? <laughs> she flips over the last card. It's number two and shows a bird in a robe sitting between two columns. The female religious head. Your faith in a close friend will allow you to complete a difficult task. That's good. And when will all this happen exactly? The cards do not specify. But predictions such as these rarely speak of the distant future. Let us depart. We have heard enough meaningless prognostication. Depart. <laughs> uh, you get up from the table. Uh, what were you doing again? You had been attending to consume a green liquid. Huh? Oh, right. What is the cause of your current unresponsiveness? I think I'm just distracted by that fortune. What do you think she meant by an irrelevancy? Prediction of future events is scientifically impossible. Right, no, obviously. <laughs> Pirate Captain, I think I need to lay down. Avast or something. You crawl into a conveniently located hammock. Dream logic. Very well. It appears that we have come to the end of the demonstration. Shutting your eyes, though, what now? Do not concern yourself. Thank you and have a pleasant morning. That was shady. I don't know what to think. Okay. You wake up feeling a bit different than you did yesterday. Your serenity has is now lowered. Your alacrity is now heightened. Your vigilance is now normal. Okay, that's pretty good to have something normal. Your melancholy is very is now very heightened. Yeah, because, huh? The fortunes. Your tenacity is now normal. Your guile is now normal. This is not very good. I don't like this serenity thing where it's not very high. And I'm not sure exactly what this is again. Again, I will have to look that up. Really interesting though. Okay, I'm glad I have three things normal. Like, that's uh, three out of six, so at least I'll be able to do most of the things. And I think we're gonna end the episode right here with July 14th, guys. So tune in for the next episode if you want to see more.